One of the questions that are pretty common in the do-it-yourself audio forums, and people have been asking me, you know, they might be new to building an amplifier. They build their amplifier, test it out, and it has distortion or it buzzes and clicks and pops and things like that. What's the problem? How can we correct that? I briefly touched on this subject in other videos, but I never really made a complete video on its own. And I think that will help people out if I do that. So we'll investigate this issue and uh, see how we can correct it. Well, today I'm going to use an LM1875. Just set up a circuit here. And it does have issues. And we'll play some music here and, and see what it sounds like. Okay, let's power this thing up. I have the scope monitoring the output. Okay, power up. Bring my hand near the music player, it's oscillating. Yeah, this thing has issues. What is the problem? Let's take a look at this basic schematic. It's not any particular amplifier. It's just a quick, simple drawing. with doesn't have all the components just for the sake of discussion. Well, I have my input signal here coming into the amplifier. And the output. That's the speaker. And let's say I have it hooked up the way I have it hooked up with this circuit. I have the input connecting to the same ground point where the speaker returns to the, the ground of the amplifier circuit. Well, because every wire has a little bit of resistance, some of that output from the speaker or from the amplifier speaker is just part of that circuit you know the higher current's going to produce a small amount of voltage and because we return the input to that point some of that's going to show on the input and it's going to end up going back into the amplifier and that can cause distortion or oscillation Okay, to correct that problem, I rewired the amplifier, and I'm showing it this way. So we have these four lines coming into this one point. Might have heard it referred to as a star ground. And that eliminates the problem of the output signal flowing in the input's ground, because it has its own return point. So that takes care of that problem. Still have another problem though. This particular amplifier has the inverting input brought out to a pin and we can use the negative feedback to set the gain of the amplifier. And we're returning it to the speaker's output line. Well, we need to fix that or we're going to have, you know, some issues. So We'll just adjust that, bring it into its own point, like that. And now all these points go into this star connection, and we're not going to have that issue with, you know, currents flowing in parts of the circuit it shouldn't be. And that should eliminate our issue with distortion. Now I should mention, the way schematic diagrams are drawn, they're drawn to look neat and simple. They're not always going to show the circuit properly connected into a star ground. For example, if you look at the LM1875 data sheet, it's not going to show this. It will mention in the, um, the description where you know, it tells you how to lay out the amp on the board and everything. It, it does mention 
proper layout, but it's not going to show that in the schematic. Okay, so that's one thing, that's star grounding. Another problem with this circuit, just look at the components, they're just scattered everywhere. Not really neat, and that does cause a problem. You have a problem called loop length in critical components such as power supply decoupling capacitors. And if you lay the circuit out cleaner like this, you know, small loop length, the star ground is down here. The, you know, if I connect all the you know wires to it properly, and I got the components real close to the chip as I can with this, you know, the socket board. Much better than this mess, that's for sure. I drew in the power supply decoupling capacitor, which is very important to virtually any circuit, any amplifier type circuit. It should also return to this point like this. Again, the schematic doesn't actually represent the layout. This looks like a long run, but the way it's set up on the board, it's a very small loop. So it comes off the supply pin and goes to the ground here. I must admit, when I first set up this circuit, it wouldn't oscillate. The LM1875 is a fairly stable chip, and what I did is just use lower value power supply decoupling capacitors to make it oscillate for my demonstration here. I normally like to decouple the chip with these Panasonic film 0.22 microfarad capacitors. If the power supply leads are more than about 10 centimeters or so away from the main filtering capacitors, you should also add some electrolytic capacitors such as a 330 microfarad as part of the power supply decoupling circuit. Okay, we got a nice tighter layout here to care of all those other problems. And Sounds perfect now. No distortions, no oscillating. Well, that wraps up this part of the video. Now let's look at other problems. Okay, so this amplifier is working just fine now, but if you can hear that, there's a pesky electrical noise. What's the problem and how can that be dealt with? Well, in this case, like I say, the amplifier is working just fine. I do have this wire just hanging off, connected to nothing. And it picks up that electrical noise and it gets really loud when I touch it. Well, the amplifier is working fine. It's a moderate in input impedance. It's amplifying the signal. You're going to have some of that noise. But in an actual finished amplifier, maybe you put in a box or something like that or some sort of casing it's going to have a, a lead connected to it that goes runs out to the you know some sort of input connector RCA or you know whatever type of connector you use well you want to have that as shielded as much as possible to eliminate that noise when there's you know when there's nothing connected to the amplifier many ways to go about shielding. For one thing, you can use a shielded type cable that has the outer braid that's wrapped around an insulated central conductor and the braid is connected to ground. And of course, the central conductor goes to the input of your amplifier. You can also use a twisted pair type cable Here's some twisted cables, actually three conductors, but you get the idea. When you put the amplifier in a box, you want to uh, 
you know, put metal around at least part of the circuit, like aluminum. Not touching, but underneath the amplifier that's grounded, which helps shield the circuit from outside electrical noise. For low impedance loads, another way is to have the input impedance set lower. Because you know, if you're going to use a music player such as this, the output of these is fairly low impedance because they have to drive headphones. So you can add a resistor. It could be a 1K resistor, and that will pretty much eliminate the noise being picked up on the inputs when nothing is connected or your music player shut off so the amplifier doesn't sit there and pick up electrical noise. With line inputs or uh, especially with musical instruments like guitars that have a very high impedance you really can't do this because you, know, you want, want to uh, maximize the amount of signal getting into your amplifier and you know if you for example if you connected a guitar up to a you know maybe you have a preamp stage or something and you had the impedance set low you'd get very little signal because the pickups on a guitar are high impedance devices and you'll lose a lot of signal so you really can't do that in this case and if you do hook a um impedance resistor across the input make sure it's done on the outside of the coupling capacitor you can't really do it here because in some cases it will disturb the bias currents that are set up in the amplifier and by the way that could be also a potentiometer if you want to control the level another thing is to keep RF out of your amplifier and that's done by having a low pass filter. So the combination of a resistor and a capacitor, small value, usually a ceramic capacitor rated a few hundred um, micro, or I'm sorry, picofarads. Uh, generally you see in the 100 to 500 picofarad range and there'll be a 1k or 2.2k or some value resistor here and any high frequency RF will be shunted to ground and not get into your amplifier. Last but not least is this sound. It has a quite different characteristic than the electrical noise that was picked up from the input of the amplifier. Well, this noise is injected into the amplifier from the power supply when operated from the AC mains. You know, it usually goes to a transformer, four-way rectified and filtered, sent on to the amplifier. Chip amps usually don't have an issue with this because they have what's known as a high supply voltage rejection ratio or a SVR. In fact, I had to set up kind of a demo for this. I'm cheating a little bit. I'm just using a wall wart running through a resistor into the speaker and back out. The uh, amplifier is not even connected in this case. Now single-ended devices like a tube amp that just has a single output tube, you know, those are quite susceptible to this and you really have to filter the supply to take care of that. On chip amps some of them have a SVR pin we have to connect a small capacitor from the output to ground or from the SVR pin to ground to eliminate that so you want know, to make sure that's connected. Uh, make sure your filter caps are large enough you know the size of the filter cap that's another story but you know generally even if they're inadequate um, for filtering to get the maximum power out of your amplifier they're usually more than adequate for SVR issues. So, well, that's it for this. Hopefully, it helps you out, and thanks for watching.